Today's adventure brings us to the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo, the seventh park to be featured on an exhibit tour. What always stands out to me here is the fantastic landscaping, which is most prevalent in the African journey, where guests are greeted by beautiful gardens before exploring in and around giant coffee boulders. There's also the Indonesian rainforest that features a large indoor tropical aviary. And to wrap up the zoo's three main realms is the Australian Adventure, where you can see the many colors of the Great Barrier Reef and walk right alongside kangaroos. Today, we won't be touring any of those. Instead, we'll be starting right inside the entrance gate so I can introduce you to the zoo the same way you would be if you made a visit, with the Zoo Central. Monkeys, sea lions, penguins, and more. While it doesn't compare in quality to the zoo's larger sections, this area has received some upgrades in recent years, so I'll be able to show off some of the zoo's newest habitats. Just inside the entrance and directly straight ahead, our first stop is the Monkey Island. Primate islands have been a staple at zoos across the world for a long time. This one received a makeover in 2018 and sets itself apart by housing the white-faced capuchin. Capuchin monkeys of any kind aren't particularly a common sight, at least at the zoos that I frequent, and I've never seen this exact species at any other zoo. The white-faced capuchin inhabits the tropical forest of Central America, Colombia, and Ecuador. In the wild, capuchin monkeys may live up to 30 years, but in captivity, some individuals have lived to be 50 years old, which is very impressive for a smaller primate. Fort Wayne has a smaller troop of three individuals. Over to the right was once a series of cages that exhibited bobcats, pheasants, and other small animals. It is now combined as one habitat for a family of Canada lakes. Mother Frisco, Father Loki, and their now grown offspring Nootka and Akadia, who were born in 2019. A third kitten named Sakani was born with abnormalities in his foot and was hand reared by zoo staff before moving to another facility. Though all four live together here at the zoo, wild lynx prefer to live alone, roaming territories that may approach 100 square miles in size. Their large paws act as snowshoes, helping them traverse and hunt in wintry terrain. The path then passes by the entrance for the African journey and the Discovery Garden before the trail splits, inviting you to climb up this hill, where, until recently, you would have found a row of simple habitats that were somewhat detached from the rest of the Zoo Central exhibits. They housed red pandas, lemurs, and even a Komodo dragon, but as you can see, this area is now a construction site that by summer 2023 will be transformed into the Red Panda Ridge. I don't really know anything about the plans for the exhibit, so for now, we'll backtrack down the hill where, through the foliage, you can get a backside view of the capuchin monkeys. And straight ahead is another newer habitat, this one being completed in 2019. Along the middle of the exhibit is an inviting cave which has a much smaller viewing window looking into the home for their North American river otters. A major improvement on their former exhibit. Although I only saw two otters on my most recent visit, if the information I found online still holds up, this habitat is home to three boys, Warwick, Miko, and Kramer. Around the corner is where they usually draw the biggest crowds at the underwater viewing windows for their pool. Between their powerful tails, webbed feet, and water repellent fur, river otters are built for life in the water. In the 1990s, wild otters returned to the waterways of Indiana after being absent from the state for around 50 years as a result of overhunting. Across the path is a brand new habitat for a duo that's moved between a few different exhibits at the zoo in recent years. Roaming the forest floor is a unique South American rodent called the Red Rumped Agouti, and leaping between the trees above them is a pair of white-faced sakis. This acrobatic small primate spends almost their entire life living in the trees. As you can see, this species is sexually dimorphic, with males having black fur and the prominent white faces, while females are a lighter brownish gray. 
The next habitat has its own entry path. Here, crowds may gather to watch a trio of playful California sea lions. This very long coastline habitat offers up no less than six different viewing areas from which to watch the pinnipeds fly through the water. The last of these wraps around to give a view of the entire habitat. Despite their name, the California Sea Lions range includes not only California, but also extends all the way from the coast of Vancouver Island down to Mexico. Sea lions got their name from the manes grown by adult males, which are most prevalent in the stellar sea lion. You won't see that here, as the zoo's individuals are all females, Cassandra, Valkyrie, and Electra, the latter two of which arrived from SeaWorld Orlando in 2020. Sea lions have very high intelligence rivaling that of a dog, and if you're lucky, they may take notice and play with you along the glass. Past the penguin photo op are some actual penguins, African black-footed penguins to be specific. There are 17 species of penguins worldwide, about 10 of which live in temperate or warmer climates, although this is the only one native to Africa. They actually mostly inhabit a number of islands off of Africa's southwestern coast. Their habitat here is fairly simple and lacks the underwater viewing seen at most newer penguin exhibits, but it still has most everything a penguin could want, with a nice pool, sandy beach, and a row of nesting burrows built into the rock. The next habitat received some small upgrades earlier this year. The land portion can also be viewed from a side path, but no matter which viewing area I was at, I got the cold shoulder from Ron, their American alligator. Nearby is an exhibit for giant Aldabra tortoises, before you would then enter the Indiana Family Farm. But we'll be ending the tour here, leaving us perfectly positioned for our next trip to Fort Wayne, where we'll head across these train tracks and travel to the land down under, where we'll walk and even canoe past some of Australia's most iconic species. As always, thank you for watching and here's a sneak peek of our next great tour.